If you've seen any of my other videos here on Kittle's YouTube channel, you know that I love typography. I love all things fonts and typography. Anything type related, I'm all over it. Well, a huge trend right now is this kind of oversized type format. And this is huge in editorial design and posters and social media billboards. And basically what we're looking for is just very, very large type with groups of type kind of sprinkled throughout. And this is helpful in a lot of ways. One, it's eye-catching. Two, it's very readable. Three, it's interesting. And four, it's easy. I drafted this up and we got it printed by Printify. Shout out Printify. And this was super easy to make. I mean, this took less than 10 minutes. And so really the only two components involved in this style are type and color, which makes it the perfect case study for you as a designer to try out today. So let's look at this Kittle project of this book. Now there was, I don't know if I still have the layer in here, but there was a guide for this that, yep, that Printify provided. And I kind of ignored some of the areas that they said not to print, which if you can see on the binding, it prints past the binding, which I don't care. I'm fine with that because I wanted the type to be actually centered on the front of the cover and then centered like the whole composition to be centered on the back as well. So it does have some print on the binding, but when you kind of like step back and look at it, it's, you can't really tell. And I also just needed a cool notebook. This is gonna be my idea book for my brand, On Time Studio, so if I have content ideas, I've been launching a new series of very hyper creative reels and whatnot on my Instagram, so if you wanna go check that out, you can definitely see a shift from the old stuff to the new stuff, but as soon as I have an idea, I want to actually write it down physically. I don't wanna take a voice memo or put a note in my phone. I like physically writing things down because it helps me think slower and the idea comes out more formulated, more well-rounded, and just makes more sense. And I like the tactile nature of writing, which, you know, before this, the last time I wrote was probably in middle school. Even in high school, we had laptops. Back to the project. So I've got my guide set up, and this is just a guide that Printify will provide to you if you want to do a book like this but again this is a style that goes across a lot of different mediums so if I turn my guide off I'm gonna break down this simple oversized type structure so it started as just the title right here and you could do this as one text box I just did it as two and actually all of these are different text boxes and that's the way that I would recommend doing it. If you were doing it broken up like this, it's kind of grid-like. I would just do it as different text boxes because if you don't, then you're gonna have to, you know, adjust your uh, line spacing and, you know, go in and hit the space bar a bunch of times to like knock it over to the position that you want. But the idea is essentially to kind of use the text boxes as like blocks and build a grid with white space or empty space in mind so that you can fill it with other things like icons or text. And so I've just got my title right here on the front of the book, a little bit of block text up here, a little bit of block text on the bottom, and these are actually centered. So if I group that and put center vertically, it's just actually centered vertically that whole text box and two lines each. But I wanted the title to be really big and this is also kind of a form of minimalism while still being bold, which is why this trend works very, very well. And then over here, I just kind of, I opened up my guide here and I just thought of it like building blocks, like Legos. So, you know, one line, two, one, two, three, and then this is like right justified over to where I would want it to cut off and then, you know, one, two. And so it's kind of this like cadence, like I'm, I'm kind of writing a narrative throughout my design. And then these two text boxes are really just for balance. I mean, the, the text itself kind of does make sense, but it's more for filling out the space and adding you know, balance to the design. So that is the design of this notebook cover, but I thought that we could design together a quick 
poster, just black and white. Like I said, that you can have some fun with color and we'll flash some references up on here on the screen. These are some things that I found on Pinterest, just some very, very good examples of oversized type. A lot of them you can see are in the editorial format, but let's go over to this. This is a little bit more of like a poster size format. And the secret weapon for making this really, really easy for yourself is to use grids. So if you've never used grids on Kittle, you can just use command or control if you're on a Windows computer. I think I've, I haven't used a Windows computer in a very, very long time, but I'm on an Apple computer and I have my cute little Apple keyboard. So I'm gonna hit command and then apostrophe to turn on and off my grids. Now, depending upon the size of your project, those grids, that those boxes are gonna be a certain size. So what you can do is if they're too large or too small, you can come up to this menu right here, view, and then you're gonna say grid, and you can control the size of that. My project is quite large, so if I go down here, this actually gets pretty you know, small. So I'm going to put this up. You also have the option of using guides as well. You can go up to the ruler on the sides and the top and bottom, and if you drag over, these guides, you can see it'll come down onto, I'm gonna turn my grid back on, it'll come down wherever you place it, just like that. And I'm actually going to size this out so it matches the grid there. So that's what you can do if you know you have like a margins on the edge that you don't wanna go past, but you don't wanna look at that super, super blasphemous grid the entire time, boop. Now you still have your guides. Pro tip, any guides that you drag out across and your cursor doesn't land on the artboard are gonna stay across the entire endless canvas, but any margins that you drag in from the ruler and your cursor falls within the artboard are gonna terminate on the edges. And so you'll see a red guideline instead of a blue one that reaches across the entire canvas and then turns red in the portion of your design. You can also just click and delete these guides as well. So for the main title, I'm just gonna use a great font. I think that the font that I used for this was New Haas Grotesque. It's very reminiscent of Helvetica, but it's not Helvetica. So if you're looking for a break from that, or you just don't want to have to say that you used Helvetica in something and get made fun of because it gets used a lot, I don't care, I'll take the heat. You know, you can use New Haas Grotesque and it's a, just a fantastic sans serif font. And the grotesque fonts are just great. They're very minimal, but they're clean and modern and trendy and there's nothing off putting about them. They're just very non-confrontational sans serif fonts. So I'm gonna get a title going right here. I love the a little bit closer text spacing look. So I'm gonna smash these letters together a little bit. That way, here's the kicker, I can make it bigger, right? I can make the type bigger in the, the defined space that I want if the letters are closer together. And I'll show you what I mean. If I put this letter spacing back to zero, it is now past my margins and I have to make it smaller to fit in that space. And that just doesn't look as good to me. I want the letters to be a little bit bigger. And so it's helpful to think about the space that you want to fill when you're trying to consider, should I make my, close, my letters closer together, more farther apart? What vertical and horizontal space are you actually trying to fill? Determine that and then let the letter spacing, line spacing and, and kerning and whatnot help you achieve that instead of trying to pick the letter spacing first and then fill a random space awkwardly and you don't know how to do it. I've got a nice clean title right here. Some of you might have seen something that looks like this, which I will have to close the line height a bunch, but there is a book, a Tom Ford book, that literally the title on it just looks like this. And that would be an example of oversized type. So you've probably seen that at a bookstore or maybe in a department store, a fashion store, whatnot. A lot of fashion companies are using this kind of minimalist oversized type style to be attention grabbing, but not stop the show, you know, like they're wanting to sell their clothes, not their books. And so they're gonna make their books speak 
clearly and be clean, but not take away from the fashion that they provide as well. So I'm just gonna copy this text down. I'm gonna turn my guides back on. And the way that I copy text is just hold option, click and then drag, and that will duplicate your text for you. You can also hold shift to keep it in line. So if I click this down and I go like this, I'm a little free, free flowing, but if I hit shift, it'll keep it in line horizontally or vertically for me. So I'm just gonna cut this text by like a third. So instead of 600, I'm gonna do 400. And so a good rule of thumb with cutting text sizes is about 30 to 33% from you know this line to this line to that line works pretty well. So I'm going to duplicate this title and then I'm going to make it about a third of this size. So I've seen the, the 30 to 33% rule, which is like if you're trying to figure out like headline, subtitle, and then copy text, it's just you, you cut your text by a third and then that's your new font size, which I could do that and say 400, but it's kind of a little too big for this so i'm going to cut it by two thirds and make it 200. make sure to utilize your alignment tools so i'm going to have this kind of dance back and forth between right and left so i'm just going to walk through like the design process so this would be like ideation and then i'm going to come down you know what let's say one line and, and obviously this doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat, you're gonna have to do some experimentation with this, which is what I'm gonna type right now. Experimentation. And then let's say the next one is creation. And then we're gonna come down again. Iteration. And then relation. I think that looks good. Let me turn my grids off. I might actually just pull this down, select all of these text boxes and then pull them down to the bottom. And so now we have some good weight up top and some good weight on the bottom as well. I've seen this other thing that people do where they'll take like just a thin line to connect text boxes. And so we could zoom in here, pull this guy over, say like, oh, that process leads to that. And then this is gonna cascade down to over here. And so what we're doing is we're just making this as creatively interesting as we can without ruining everything. Let me just copy this one. So that's starting to look pretty interesting. And so, yeah, this is definitely just an experimentation process. You could, let's say we just type this right here, put it in the middle, and then we're going to cut this text by a third. I don't know what a third of 200 is. Let's just say like 140-ish. That's a little too big. Let's do 120. Still a little big. And we're going to put this type in the middle. So I'm just going to type in here. It all starts with an idea. Then we enter sandbox mode where the ideas start to take shape. After that, we mold our ideas into concepts and designs. Most times, these will need changes, so we iterate. Then we share our work with others. And that was just like BS text. I want to make this quite a bit smaller. And then I'm going to use my guides here to fill three blocks right there. And that looks pretty balanced to me. Just random, like design, poster, text with oversized type and then fill in the blanks where you need to to make it balanced. That's, that's really all it is. It's just type, color, and balance. That's all you need to know. Make sure to utilize your grids and your rulers to drag them over. I'm not a huge ruler person, but it was actually very, very helpful for this. And this is very, very well-rounded poster design. And I think that it's very balanced. And that's probably due to the fact that I used grids and guides. Go try this out for yourself. Even if you do not like this style, like if you saw this poster, you saw this kind of style, you wouldn't really buy something. I promise, I promise you, 
that it is going to be very, very helpful in your design journey, just understanding how different text boxes, different fonts, different type settings and formats relate to each other. Knowing how to fill certain space with type and make it balanced is a massive skill that's going to apply to every other design context. Make sure to like this video and leave a comment down below if you've seen this oversized type format before. And while you're here, if you've watched to the end of the video, you might as well subscribe to the Kittle channel. If you've not tried Kittle, you can try Kittle for free today using the link in the description of this video. And if you're already a Kittle free user and you wanna to upgrade to a pro plan, have a little bit more beefy features, have access to the good stuff, then we have a promo code in the description of this video to get a percentage off your new plan. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.